Hey, this is Dr. Keith again. I'm going to show you guys how to do flow charting. We're going to use a tool called Lucidchart, which is an online tool. Um, other commonly used tools are like Microsoft Visio. That's a good offline tool for flow charting. Lucidchart is very simple and easy. Uh, you can sign up right now for a free account. There's also a student account that will let you um, use it for free for more like a year. Here we go, our student single user account right here. So sign up on this if you haven't already and you want to use this. Although you don't have to, you're welcome to simply do this on paper and follow along with me. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Oh, I forgot I got to use my uh, university address. Okay. Once you log in, Lucidchart gives you lots of different types of options. We're going to use what's called uh, BPMN 2.0, Business Process Modeling Notation. So I'm going to create a new document. BPMN 2.0. We're going to use this. Let me give myself a bit more real estate here to work with. There we go. Okay, I'm going to hit Control A, select all of this, and delete so we can start fresh. All right, I'm going to paste an, uh, a problem that I want to begin working on. Okay, actually, I'm just going to show it here from the PowerPoint. So, what we want to do is calculate the balance of money that will be in a savings account for a certain number of years. Um, here's our variables we're going to use. The D for the deposit amount, interest rate, number of years. Here's our algorithm for calculating what the balance will be. And what we want to do is develop a flow chart to calculate and display the balance. So, why do we develop a flow chart for this in the first place? It seems pretty straightforward. Well, whenever there's a common task in business that we can create an information system, technology, or tool to support or do for us, we're going to begin with a flow chart. The flow chart is a diagram that serves the purpose of uh, helping to translate requirements across business users and IT users. If we can create a diagram that will explain or show exactly how this should be done, then the business user can create that diagram and give it to the developer who can then write a program to do exactly what the flow chart says. So let's do this. All right, here's our uh, lucid chart again. Every chart's going to start with uh, what we call a start symbol. And I know different tools like Lucid Chart has their own version of a start symbol. This is a pretty standard uh, symbol for start. And I'm going to copy this and we'll have an end over here. Now normally I like to do my charts vertically. Um, because of the screen size, this one's going to be horizontal and my next few examples will just to make it easier to fit on one screen. So there are three steps to every single flowchart problem and I want you to memorize those steps. It'll help you. In every problem we're going to begin by collecting inputs. So I'm actually going to create some text here to remind you of this. Collect inputs. One. Then we're going to perform processing. And then we're going to uh, generate, produce, or um, output the results. There we go, three steps. If you have no clue where to begin on a flow charting problem, and the same thing goes for VBA too when you learn that in the next module, you'll always follow these three steps. So let's begin by collecting inputs. We use this, uh, I think it's called a rhombus image. My class taught me today. We're going to use this image and write the keyword inputs. Shift enter goes down to the next line in Lucid Chart. And then we're going to list the things we need to collect from the user. Okay, we need uh, D, the initial deposit, R, the interest rate, and N, the number of years. So I'm using these these uh, variable names or short names to represent these things I'm going to collect from the user to output the results. So if I'm going to do that, I need a legend. So somewhere on your page, we need to put a legend. And with a text box, a regular enter is all you need, not shift enter to go down to the next line. All right, and I'm just simply going to say D equals the deposit, R equals the interest. Why can't I stop doing that? Interest rate and n equals number of years. Okay, make sure you've got a clear legend somewhere on the page. Uh, we also need a flow or a connector. So I'm going to connect start here to my inputs and let's uh, 
There we go, align that. So when we start the process, we begin by collecting these inputs. Next, uh, we need to perform processing. So instead of this rhombus, we use a rectangle. I guess I can move this over a bit. And here in the process box, we're going to put the actual formula that will be used. So we need to record some overall balance. B equals, and it was actually given to us back here on the PowerPoint. Okay, balance equals D times 1 plus R raised to the N. So D is a deposit times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the number of years. That's our algorithm to, to calculate the, the, uh, um, the balance. Okay, oops, I need to go back to my, there we go. Deposit times 1 plus the rate raised to the N. Okay, there's a processing that just took place. We need now to uh, connect these. Can I use this one? That works too. I think it was faster the other way though. There we go. Nope. I don't think I like that one. Let me grab this one again because then I can just connect directly to this and directly to that. That's better. Okay. Shift to move just a little bit at a time. There we go. Now, time to output the results. We've calculated the balance. Okay, now, don't forget, now that we've created a new variable, b, to record the balance, we've got to put it down here in our, in our legend. b equals balance at a point in time, or whatever you want to write there. Okay, output, we actually use the same rhombus, or it's a data symbol is what it's called, the formal word. Uh, term. We use the same thing for both inputs and outputs. Now instead of just putting output right here, there's actually three types of output. Okay, we can either print, and that will actually print to like a receipt. We can prompt, which is like a pop-up box that will display in a, on a computer screen, or we can display, and that just means it'll show up somewhere on a, on a screen in a form. Um, I don't really care which one you use, let's use display. But we do have to shift enter and decide what it is we want to display. So I'm going to put B here because this is the calculated balance that we'll display. But let's also give the user back the deposit interest rate number of years that they gave us. And we can print it out on a nice sheet or display it on the screen form. Okay, so what I do here is I take D, R, N, and I put those in parentheses. And what that means is display these things by simply taking them directly from the input box and printing, prompting, or displaying them here. So B is not in parentheses because we calculated that balance right here. The rest are in parentheses simply because we took them straight from the input box and gave them back to the user again. So think of an ex uh, maybe when you're printing a receipt for someone, besides giving them B, the, balance, the total, their cost uh, for their items, you're also going to give them uh, the inputs needed to calculate that total, like what products they bought, what the quantities were. Those are things we'll collect as inputs that we'd want to print out at the end. And we put those in parentheses. Okay, uh, let's connect these things. There to there, there to the end, and we're all done. So here's our first flowchart. Three simple steps, collect inputs, perform processing, output results.